Every day, we as humans are integrating more and more with the technology around us, with the digital world. It's incredible. But what we're finding is that we're starting to blur this line between virtual and reality. I think it's a pretty interesting thing because as we integrate more with this technology around us, we're starting to find new ways to allow it to augment us. Now, we will all find ourselves somewhere along this continuum between the real world as we know it and the virtual world, and we're going to be moving into that future very quickly. You don't currently find yourself telling your friends about the other day when you were uh, walking around a couple of social media sites and you grabbed some mates from the other side of the world and sat in an online store whilst one of them put on some uh, virtual clothes. But the world is changing very, very quickly, and so we need to keep up with that. We need to raise the conversations as to what we could potentially achieve. Now, in the late 80s, early 90s, there was this rise of virtual reality. We had these headsets. My dad got me to try these on. These headsets that would give you an incredible headache. And uh, <laughs> it's basically like strapping a, a TV to your face. <laughs> but you can look around, and what happens then is it makes it very immersive. Now, back then, it wasn't the right time, and it was overshadowed by the rise of the internet. But we could still see, even then, that there was a future for this technology. So over the last 10 years, I've been working in technologies that can augment us, and most of my work has been in disability. I've worked on a smart wheelchair for my PhD in 2012, and this smart wheelchair was uh, allowing you to, or a person who needed it, I've mostly worked in disability on uh, communication, mobility, and connection, but this allowed you to control the wheelchair with the mind, and the wheelchair could see and think for itself like a robot. So it had robotics and artificial intelligence in there as well. Now, what was really interesting is the camera that you can see on the front, the, the yellow camera, that's a stereoscopic vision system. Now, what it has is two cameras that act just like our own eyes. They take two different images, put them on top of each other, and with that, just like we can see in three dimensions, it can project those pixels into the third dimension, giving it a third ordinate and allowing a very low-quality three-dimensional photo. Now, this was something I found on the front of the, the, uh, the laptop of the wheelchair. I found this the other day from 2008. I have no idea what I was doing here, but that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm holding some recycling boxes. But what you could see there is you can rotate three-dimensional space because it's a 3D point cloud, so all those pixels reside in three-dimensional space. Now, that was very interesting, but the technology itself has actually advanced a lot since then. Now, the rise of virtual reality came back again in 2012 with the, uh, the Oculus Rift. Has anyone heard of this? Great. OK, this is good. So we, we're, we're on board with this. That's about half the crowd, by the way, of what I just saw. Now, when I first tried the Oculus Rift, I put this device on my head, and like the TV being strapped to the face, it was a lot better than it used to be, much, much better. What I found was I found myself in a virtual apartment, and I was watching a virtual TV. And on this TV, there was a music video. Now, I got really immersed in it, and then I started to realize when it finished that I was still sitting in a virtual apartment. And then I took the device off back to the real world. But the interesting thing was I remember this as if it was a memory as if I had experienced it. And that's when, when I realized it was so incredibly powerful. So with that type of power, in that sort of technology, combined with the, uh, the 3D point clouds from 2008, it made me realize that we are standing at the verge of a massive technological revolution. We could potentially realize certain ideas as wacky as they are, certain ideas like being able to create a virtual copy of ourselves. And I started thinking about that. I thought, this would be amazing. If we could create a virtual copy, what we'd need is 3D but volumetric uh, recordings, volumetric capture of a human. And so this would be a very realistic shell. We give it a virtual skeleton. 
so that it can move and that the computer can control it through the programs. Then we get artificial intelligence, but not the general type. You don't need to have a very advanced general artificial intelligence to allow it to learn everything and go on to continue to learn. You don't need that. You just need an artificial intelligence that will learn specifics about the person being copied. Things like their gestures, their mannerisms, the things that make us, us, so that the person can spend a lot of time with the system, so the system can learn what, that per what makes up that person. And then, of course, you're going to need uh, uh, some voice synthesizers that are very natural so that the system can speak on their behalf. But what it will actually do is capture that person caught in a moment in space and time. So it's kind of like we could revisit these virtual copies and have natural conversations with them, which is very intriguing. Because if we were able to copy some of the most influential, positive change makers in this world, what if we had Stephen Hawking or Elon Musk able to be copied so that people could go and meet them in the virtual world, or even bring them into the real world through augmented reality? It's something that was very interesting. But bringing it back to a personal level, I started to realize that I wanted to see how it could affect us even more emotionally starting to think about what would happen if this was a family member that we could preserve. What we have here is a picture of myself when I was a baby with my grandfather. Now, he sounded like an absolutely lovely man, an amazing person, and I would very much love to meet him. Unfortunately, he passed away when I was uh, just before I was two, and he never got to meet my lovely, wonderful triplet siblings who are three and a half years younger than me. So if this idea, if this concept existed in the past, I would absolutely want to be able to meet a virtual copy of my grandfather and be able to, to speak with him, to be able to interact with him, because I would get a better idea of who he was. But I wanted to talk to my mum about this, because I had no idea how to gauge this, this idea that I had. So I spoke to my mum and I said, what would, what would you think if I was, say, you know, the technology is not... Not, well, not available now, but wasn't back then either. What would you say if I could have brought back your grandfather? And with tears in her eyes, she said, I don't think I'd want that because I would be constantly reliving the loss. And I started to realize this idea is actually very different. It's very important to recognize this. There's challenges and opportunities with every new technological development. So as much as I would love it, my mum would have a different approach. And the reason is because our prior relationship with the person being copied will affect the response that we have. Having said that, it would be the best thing for me if I was able to meet my grandfather. So if we take it to an even more personal level, what if we could copy ourselves throughout time and be able to go back and revisit ourselves in the past and really understand the sort of dreams, the visions that we had did you ever have those big ideas to do so much for the world? What would happen if your past self were saying, how are you going with that? <laughs> I think it's incredibly powerful. What would you say to your previous self, and what would your past self say to you now? I uh, really would like to show you something that we've been working on. So this is an amazing collaboration that we've had from my guys at Psykinetic and the brilliant people at Humans to bring together, I'll put this in my pocket, this little demo. And you can see the work that's gone into it. Thanks, buddy. Now, I'll wait till you guys can see what I can see. Let me know when you can. Yeah? You can see my little virtual stage here. Yes? Now, how would you respond? Think about it for a moment. How would you respond if you found yourself face to face with yourself? <laughs> it's incredibly weird and realistic <laughs> that I am currently walking around a virtual version of me. Now, if this wasn't you, if this wasn't your own copy, here's another interesting thing. The amazing response that we can have from this in terms of empathy, think about what would happen if you can step directly into someone else's shoes and see through their eyes. 
I'm currently wearing something different now. <laughs> Thank you. Now this was just a glimpse of what we could potentially go on to achieve, but the exciting thing about this is whenever we have these massive technological advances, the exciting thing is that it makes us realize, it makes us reflect what it means to be human. It makes us reflect on ourselves. And at the core of humanity is empathy and connection. So if you had a copy of you floating around, potentially having conversations with people, I want you to think about it. What sort of stories would you tell? What sort of vision and values would you share? And what sort of legacies would you like to leave for future generations? Thank you very much.